Hello and welcome to a tutorial for AE Tuts Plus. My name is Ren Weichman. I will be making this video. Check it out. Alright, uh, yeah, essentially I, you know, set up a camera on a tripod here. I'll just go over to the source footage. Set up on a tripod, walk over, you know, set it up, do your jump, and then might as well, while you're still recording, go over and do the next jump. Jump up and then down yes act it out and that's your clean plate where the fun part comes in is where we get to use video copilots action essentials too and let's be honest here if you haven't heard of video copilot and you're using AE there's something wrong with you uh... so let's just leave it at that basically Andrew Kramer and his team created some awesome video elements that you could just composite into your video fire smoke bullets all kinds of stuff uh... yeah make explosions and he actually has outlined some tutorials on like perhaps how to make this actual explosion and whatnot but i will cover a little bit more on different other things you can use such as making that exact video you just saw. So let's begin. Let's drag our source footage into a new comp. Take that and the first thing you're going to want to do is duplicate it twice. So you hit control D for that. In the first one, let's get it going. Find where you set it up. Walk over. Okay. About to jump. And it about right there. Now what I'm going to do to clamp this down using that is I'm going to hold down alt and hit the right bracket to bracket it to where I've got my pointer and go back I don't know five seconds or so just before you start running your choice it's the great thing about art you know <laughs> uh, and then alt left bracket go ahead and drag that over to the beginning hold down shift so it'll snap to the beginning there. snap uh, then go to your other video, you're going to try to find the landing part. So, you're going to go just before you reach the tip top of your jump or whatever. A little after maybe. You know, about right there. Alt, right bracket, make sure your thing's selected. And go till you're, you know, done with whatever you want to edit. Which is for me, right after I walk out the frame. Alright. Alt, right bracket. That's essentially going to be the second half of the video. Let's go ahead and solo the bottom layer, because for this we're going to want to get a clean plate. As you can see here, hold down H to drag, let go of H to go back to where you were. Uh, I've got a car driving out, so I'll take it from about right here. Source footage, Alt, left bracket. And go just to before I come on to the screen. This essentially is a blank, you know, <laughs> plate. So alt right bracket. And you're gonna go ahead and duplicate this a few times. One, two, three. Eh, why not a fourth one for good measure? Move that out of the way so it could pop to it. Indeed. Uh Yeah, you're just going to layer these. Ah, Control Z to undo that. Until you have a clean plate that's going to be the length of your video. I'll just do it one more time and drag that over. There, look at that beauty. Alright. Select all of those. And you're going to go up to Composition. Actually, Layer. And Precompose. Or you can hit Control Shift C. 
That'll bring up this option. So for that, let's label it clean plate. Go back to where you see the last video, wherever it is. Or you know, you could just go into your thing here. Hold down shift, it'll snap to it. In your video, go up to composition, trim comp to work area. Basically, it lets you have a giant clean plate. Uh, and it narrows it down to here as well. So, we could narrow it down to composition, trim comp to work area. This just makes our work environment a little easier to work with. So, let's unsolo that. So, essentially, what we're going to do is as we jump right here, we're going to freeze frame that. So, go over to time, enable time remapping. Now, I usually like to actually make speed up a little bit. So, just as I'm jumping, about right here, I will hit a keyframe. Make sure you hit a keyframe at the beginning, too. Um, and at the end of your footage, which is right there. Hit plus next to the backspace key to zoom in. Hit another keyframe. Might as well drag that in a little bit. Makes things go a little faster. So yeah, a little more. Why not? At any rate, uh, the point here is that actually, yeah, it's not even the frame I want to use this frame. Eh, why not that one? Add a keyframe. This one we can just get rid of. Delete. Uh, this one specifically, you're going to hold down Control, Alt, and click on it. And what does that do? It leaves it as its only frame. So it'll go, of course it'll just disappear. That's why we extend it. Don't really need to extend it too much. Because you're going to actually animate the video itself. So, once it gets to here, page up, page down. Alright, there's our final frame. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And pull out, turn that up to full res, our pen tool. I'm just gonna cut around it, nothing too fancy. The idea here is that once you cut it out, you will animate it off the screen and turn on motion blur so it'll just look like a big giant blob of motion. So go ahead and expand your mask. You can hit MM if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit that there. Page up one, just before there. You notice that it's starting to cut out of the bounds there? You don't really want that just yet. So, say we uh, expand it a little bit. Remember, nothing too fancy. Just kind of Alright, uh, so as you can see, completely in, and then all of a sudden right here is the important part. Now we can go up to our source footage. If you hit P on the keyboard, you'll come up with your position. Go ahead and click the stopwatch to leave your first keyframe. Go down three, so hit page down three times, two more. Um, and you're going to go ahead and drag, oh, not that one, control Z. But you see what it left there? So go ahead and click on him. You're going to drag him off the Really? All right. Just enough that I personally like to leave two versions on the frame. One, two, three. Zoom. So, I mean, that's 15th of a second. That's pretty fast. Uh, 
Oh yeah, we should probably name these real quick. Uh, the jump. <laughs> Can you guess it? The landing. Uh, might as well spell it correctly, somewhat. Alright, uh, that's essentially what I want to do there. F4. I apologize for the low quality sound. This is the best microphone I currently have. Um, gonna hit the motion blur key and turn on motion blur for the comp. And what that'll do is make it blurry. <laughs> you're moving at, I don't know how fast, but the point is that you're moving too fast for the camera to capture accurately. So, jump out of the screen. And there you are, you're done with part one. Uh, part two. A little different story, because what you're going to be doing here, well first off we can time it, a little less than six seconds, we could put about three, so about nine and a half, we could put it to here. Um, what we're going to have here is we're going to have to actually composite all these elements that we got from Video Copilot, which I'll explain in a moment, such as, where did it go? Cement Collapse, I like this one. Uh, that. Now you notice how, uh, if we go back to our regular footage, it's kind of the same frame of reference where you have the plane, not frame of reference, the plane, the planar ground. It's kind of the same for both this shot and the cement collapse. So that composites nicely and realistically. Back to here. So what you're going to do here is use a difference map. Or not map, mat. Difference mat. Uh, okay, so this is where we're going to start using a difference mat. And essentially, it's what it's going to do is it's going to key out the background. We have our footage, and it's on a tripod, so anything that's moving will essentially be different. What it does is it takes the pixel values on top and compares it to the pixel values on the back, and if they're the same, they essentially cancel out, so they'll have everything that's in the background or the foreground will be black, except for hopefully only me, who will not be white, but will be random colors that we can turn into white and effectively create a matte. So let's go ahead and pre-compose this. Uh, hit Control Shift, <laughs> Control Shift C, and name this landing. Uh, leave all attributes in source footage to. Actually, no, that's not what we want at all. We want to move it to that one. That will make it to where when we're in the next one, it'll already be ready for uh, where we are in editing. So double-click on the landing. Uh, go ahead and duplicate the footage. Duplicate. Actually, no. This, yeah. Duplicate. So you take your duplicated footage. Uh, let's go ahead and solo this. What you're going to do is you're going to turn it into a freeze frame. So, as you can see, nothing's on the frame right here. So let's go to time and freeze frame. So that gives us what we want. Uh, throughout the entire video clip, it's only going to be the frame. So then you click on the landing. Let's go ahead and control C to copy. Go back to your source footage and paste. And you're going to put this below because what the landing is going to end up turning into, we can actually rename it uh, landing mat. So this layer will use this layer to show what should actually be on the thing. So let's go back to it. Uh, Hit F4 on the keyboard to go to your things here. <laughs> I'll remember the name in a moment. You want to click on Difference. Uh, that will make it to where it looks like this. If everything goes to plan, you'll have your weird colored person here, and most everything else should be black. It won't be too big of a deal if it's not, but, you know, whatevs. Uh, so now we want to turn this into white. So let's go to effects and controls, then effect. You want to go to color correction and then down to levels. So you're going to brighten uh, the gamma up. I don't know what I'm doing right now, apparently. Oh, right, duh. Don't want to do that just yet. 
now that you've got these two together, control C to pre-comp it again. And it, this way, you don't actually mess up the colors of it to how it blends. So you're going to uh, see difference footage. That way you have this, and you could already you could uh, add your color corrections to this. See now it only takes into account the colors you see right here. So let's try to max out the colors that we can. Notice it goes all grainy real quick. Let's pull the gamma up so everything kind of goes black like that. Go over to effect, and you're gonna use another one called uh, hue and saturation just desaturate it just take out that color don't need that not totally necessary but I think it gives a bit of a smoother difference mat then you're gonna go and activate uh, colorama kinda as if you're making ramp gray a sky replacement which uh, yeah same deal so here you're going to add another white to the wheel after, remember to select ramp gray, that makes everything black and white, and you're going to select that again and add black. Andrew Kramer actually went over uh, an in-depth tutorial on how to replace this guy, so if you want more information on how to do this specifically, go check that out, and yeah, you will be happy. So I'm just going to adjust it to something that looks like this, giving what we had. And don't worry about all this stuff in the background. That's not a big deal. We'll cut that out in a moment. Uh, all right, one more thing before I'm completely satisfied with this mat. I'm going to go to a fast blur. And that will basically just take the hard, hard uh, edge out that we see here, for instance. That's not going to look pretty at all. So... Let's get like a two or a three. Let's try three. Yeah, three will work. Why not? Uh, so that'll be sufficient for what we need. Let's mark there. Go ahead and go to layer, new, solid. And we're going to add a black solid. Make sure it's black. Let's bring this on screen so you can see it. I apologize. Make comp size. Hit OK. And bring that black solid to the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the difference footage. Uh, bring out... You're going to basically crop it. Uh, bring out the pen tool. Then cut around like so. Uh, MM on the keyboard to hit subtract on the mask. And that'll only leave that. Let's go back to our selector pointer. Um, that's down there. You don't want to cut out your person. I'm luckily still in the view. And there we go. Uh, because you know you're going to be at some point a little out, so you're going to fix it. Alright, like that. Bam. Okay, and that will be your mat. Yay! Let's go back to our footage and the landing mat we'll use hit F4 to bring back the transfer modes again so you could uh, hit track mat and go down to luma mat and there you go if you solo it you'll see it's just the actor that's the important part there so anything that's white in that video will be preserved on the layer below it anything that's black will just go to black so that's how you're able to, uh, if I was to select that, well, yeah, that won't work. I'll have to actually select both of them, so. Control shift. There we go. Landing mat. Control 
shift C. So this is the lonely footage. Um, landing footage. I know it might might seem uh, that I'm doing the pre-comping a lot, but let me tell you, it definitely works wonders sometimes as far as simplicity and organization, not to mention the effects you can do on top of them. Alright, hopefully I still have the footage copied, so I hit paste. Yep, I do. And now you can drag it below. This I will take off for a moment just to demonstrate, but you'll see in a moment why. Um, so if I was to like, then suddenly we've got two different footages here. It's not really what we want. So I hit Control Z to go back to the position that I had it at before. All right. So congrats, you've made a difference, Matt. Now this is where the fun part comes in, and this is where Andrew Kramer's unbelievably awesome Action Essentials 2 comes into play. We have different things like the ground crack, which is what we will use for uh, making it look all crazy. And it's gray, so we could use a transfer mode of overlay, like this one. This one's a little different. Uh, we've got some sounds. I mean, everything I'm using came directly from Action Essentials. Uh, like I said, you can buy it from right here. Hundred dollars for a 720p. Little more for uh, the 2K, but hopefully you know what you're doing if you're buying that one. Got some explosions. Uh, that was the sound. The dust wave's kind of cool. Just a big dust wave and dirt charge. So let's start off by, firstly, jump out here, page up to go one frame to the left, there. So right here is where we're going to bring that in. Where's the ground crack? Let's bring out ground crack 5, why don't we? And we'll resize it, of course. Hold down shift to make sure it scales correctly, otherwise you get, like, crushed and flipped and stuff. And Hold down shift it will stay to scale. So I'm going to place this over where I'm going to jump. And this is the cool part. Ready for this? going to hit transfer mode, then up to overlay. Don't really know exactly what it does, but it has to do with uh, basically taking away the midtones, leaving the highlights and shadows. Uh, Put that there on the ground. Want a little smaller. All right. Now, what I also like to do using these elements is uh, blur them because, as you notice, it's not an, um, it's not a good camera at all. Really, it's barely HD. Uh, I like to go up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and uh, might as well give it a lens blur. Why not? Uh, actually, no. Let's go give it the fast blur that I was doing earlier. And just set it to something to take away the sharpness from the edges. Gives it that. Uh, let's put it up a 10. Let's try that. Just a level of compositing that makes it blend more. That's the idea. So if it blends more, that's better. Let's leave it at 12. Let's try that. Why not? So that, as you can see, is going to be here a while. So let's put the first frame there. So. Page up, page down. Yeah, I don't like the height of it. Let's put it over there. Down, down. All right, cool. Um, now, if you also notice, uh, you can go back and fix it. But I have a guy in my background that I didn't realize till after I had finished the video that whenever I jump, he disappears. And I've had a couple people point that out. Yes, I am aware. Um, you can fix that by basically cropping them out in the first place. Uh, so I can do that. Like that, for instance. Ah, uh, nah. Leave them out there. Why not? Um, I like that. So let's go back to our project, and I'm going to drag out a dirt charge. Now you can't see it yet. Um, if you look down here, Explosion, dirt, 
What I'm going to do here is I'm going to double click on the square rectangle tool and that basically applies uh, a mask around the entire thing. Move it up a little bit and go over to your mask options and turn the feather up to I don't know, 30 or so. Um, the point is that you don't get that sandy bottom thing. So click on your video. I'm going to place it over there. I'm going to move that out of the way so I can actually get to the corner here because sometimes you'll frustrate yourself as you're trying to grab the corner but you're grabbing the corner of the mask instead. It's not fun sometimes. Alright. As you can see that's horribly timed so let's move that into place. Down one. There we go. Also not placed right. Let's move it into the right place. There we go. Still a little big. That's kind of monstrously huge. All right. Bam. That'll just float out of existence, and that will remain. Let's go back and actually color correct this while we're at it. Um, select your dirt charge. Go over to effect, and color correction and levels. And essentially, you want to. Uh, color correct it to match your scene first and so as you can see the majority of what's being blown up is kind of this purplish blue uh, concrete so let's on the levels go to your blue and just kind of drop the gamma a little bit there we go it looks more bluish that's pretty much all you really need to do to pull it off for now you, if you want you can get more meticulous about it but I don't think it's that big of a deal um, yeah. All right. Uh, now, time to uh, animate the second part. This part. Let's get this in the frame. Let's go ahead. Yeah, you can move that completely off uh, from the ends, cutting it. It's this that matters. Uh, just before it lands, right there. Let's go ahead and... I like to speed that up too, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, hit P. Click on the stopwatch for position. And now you can, you know, move them around. This is also gonna go away control Z to go back to where you are um, because of motion blur so go up to one two three might as well um, and just move them off screen and I like to get it again to where I have two in the screen one two three there we go I just didn't like the timing so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here uh, move these over one, two frames maybe. Yeah, while you're scrubbing through it, you might get like weird uh, things like that. But if you let go and actually let it render, you'll find that it'll go away. Except for that one. Um, so F F4 to select the motion blur. Bam. Get a blurry topic and. There you go, so come out of screen, bam, there you are. So this is where we're going to drop the other, you could use the same one if you want, I'm going to use a different one. Uh, make it smaller, this one's going to be a little bigger because it's more awesome, more in your face. So hit F4 again to go back to your transfer modes, and go back to overlay. There you go. But you see how it seems to go straight over character? Just because you want to drop that below that. So magically, you have your new scene. Yay. Also still a little big for my taste. Don't make a joke out of that. <laughs> it's too easy. Uh, 
Also, I don't really like this bar back here. And so the beauty of that is you can just go ahead and, you know, cut it out. <laughs> don't want to cut that out, so go ahead and invert that. Or, you know, you set to subtract. Doesn't really matter. Does the same thing in the end. Alright, go back to your pointer. Right, this, you're going to want to drag. And drag, and drag, and drag, and drag. Seriously? Alright, there we go. Bam. Alright, this I also like to do. Let's go select the ellipse tool. Yeah, let's set this back to just regular subtract and hit this add. Um, gonna need to move these, the order of these, because uh, it renders from top to bottom for the masks. All right, so you're going to want to uh, keyframe the expansion, like right here, uh, a little bigger, that's the first thing. Then go down one frame, you're back in the thing, so expand it to where everything is covered. Perhaps move that another frame over. So you see, that comes into play. It's like the cracks are expanding at your feet. Alright, uh... Got that animated. Let's go back to our footage and add... Let's go ahead and add the bouncing debris first. Uh, go ahead and drop it in right where you'd want to keep it. Um, it's right here. Go ahead and go to time, time stretch, make it, I don't know, 70%. You want it to be a little faster. Uh, I don't recall how fast it actually is. It seems about right. Um, for color correction, go to effects, color correction, levels. You want to match this with the background. Um, so go to your blues. See how that changes. I drop the gamma just a little bit, um, and this is a lot of just like playing around to get the right match. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the green, boost the green a little bit to add the bit of purple, a little bit red. Let's see if we can add a little bit. Yeah, just playing around so you get it right. Uh, really do much there, did I? <laughs> At any rate, uh, another thing to help you with the compositing is to blur it yet again. Remember, it's really sharp, the camera's not that amazing, so put it at like three. That's way too blurry. Let's try one. Even that's a little too much, but it's not really going to matter. Another thing I forgot was the fact that the ground crack I didn't uh, blur out easier. Uh, I've got fast blur already up here, so select that. Um, move to uh, let's try five first. That will be noticeably blurry, I believe. So let's try three. Just sharp enough. Yet if you turn it off, you notice that it's completely fake. Turn it back on gives it just that subtle hint of being real. This is the inaccuracies. Uh, that's why I like the blur. Yeah, that is completely terrible color correction on my part. Um, go back to the bouncing degree debris. That's yeah, that's a little better. Just leave it at that. All right, now the my favorite element is the cement collapse. Bring that in between your two landing footages, 
drop that to right there. Get to... Well, first off, this play is in really slow motion, so go to time stretch and put it at like 40. Just try that. About right there ish. Slide that over and bring to the front. This is where I like to uh, bring in a mask. Go ahead and bring the rectangle tool out. Actually, double click on it. Double click on the mask. Now you can uh, see how you can drag it in. Pull it down like that. Double click on your mask. Uh, mask path, keyframe. Go down like three. Then. bring it to there, leave the keyframe, then go down one more and keep it all the way. Otherwise it'll try to interpolate from nothing to max in over those three ranges, but you want it to be more accurate to reveal in three frames from here to here. So I just like it that way. Good. Nice and easy. Um, yeah. And as you can see, it blends to a certain, ex certain point because it is behind the actor it happens to be me. So let's go ahead and color correct this while we're at it. Hit the levels. Go over to blue. Drop down the gamma a bit. Go to green. Boost ever so slightly. Maybe better off doing it this way. I worked on this for a while trying to get this correct, so getting it right in a tutorial isn't necessarily key. But you kinda get the gist of what's necessary. Just kinda adjust the gamma on each one of these and or you could also uh turn that off and you could use uh, the other thing I've used before is uh, color balance, which basically gives you a numeric value for every one. Uh, so I have it turned on. I like to turn up the blue highlights, the blue shadow. Just kind of play around. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and delete that. Uh, turn that back on. It's not perfect. And remember to apply your blur. Let's go to fast blur. This one, just put it at one. There you go. It's plenty. All right, so we're getting a little bit more of what it's going to look like in the end. Let's go ahead and uh, ram preview this. Let's get it selected. Alright, so let's ram preview that. Hit zero on the spacebar. Or zero on the number pad. And it'll start rendering for you. Okay, now that we've got this thing uh, previewed, go ahead and preview it. Let's see if. Let's try it again. That's not too bad. I don't really like where this stuff's falling, so I'll go ahead and select that and move it over to about right there, where I feel in the end that's where I'm going to want it to be. Just like there. Yeah, again, don't worry about all the blurry stuff that goes on while it's trying to process each frame. Alright, that's not too bad. Uh, let's go ahead and work with that. So, let's go back. Let's add the other dust charge. What did we add before? We added the, yeah, dirt charge 6. Let's add dirt charge 14. Right there. Remember, let's add the, double click on that. Drag that up, 
about right there. Go over to the mask, hit the feather, go to... Yeah, might as well go to 30. Make it nice and smooth. As you can see, if you turn the mask off, it's like that. So, let's align this. You could cut it forward too. Hit plus on the keyboard again to zoom in on your work area. Uh, I'm just kind of deciding where I want to put this. Oh, right. Uh, the dirt charge you probably want to put above the landing footage to make sure, like, not everything is beneath it. So you kind of get a little bit more dust and particle effects and whatnot. So about right there. Uh, and let's. Where was that mask? Uh, we could draw another one. Why not? Like that. So uh, let's see. Yeah. Let's just go ahead. And there you go. Make that disappear. About right there. Uh, we want it to subtract from what we have. So go down and hit mask path. Go down a couple keyframes so everything's like away. And we can just go up. It's like right there. Go down one more. And just take it off the screen. There you go. Uh, Alright. Bam. Yeah, let's make that feathered out nicely. There we go. Alright, color correction time. Yay. Uh, like we did before for the last start charge, we could just go back to uh, color correction levels, go over to your blue, and just kind of drop the gamma. On the blue. You can change it. I mean, if you want it to be like neon blue, yeah, by all means, if you want. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Control Z. See what else. Eh, I like it like that. Let's try that. Alright, so we've got our dust particle now. Or, I mean, our dirt charge. Yes, and one last thing to round out this sequence, really, is to add uh, a dust wave, indeed. Alright, this you're going to want to keep full frame, so you can get that background dusty look to it. Let's pull it back to the beginning and to make it to where you can kind of conform where you are uh, go ahead and drag it to about right here ish uh, and draw a, a mask Go to your mask properties, MM, and this you're going to want to have on top of absolutely everything, might as well. Uh, feather it out, about 50 or so, and subtract. I'm actually going to want to make it like 150, because it really fades it out that way. Uh, keyframe the mask, go down just a couple, so one, two three maybe. Double click on your mask. On your mask. Come 
on, I have faith in you, Mask. There we go. Whatever. Uh, drag it off the screen like that. It gives the whole dust is flying away thing. And when you have it feathered out enough, it, it's just a cloud, so it's not really that big of a deal. Um, now you can go ahead and take it completely off. Alright, uh, that still looks terrible, right? And you're going to want to color correct it, right? Right? Uh, not necessarily so. I'm going to, but what you're going to end up doing is dropping the there's levels opacity on it to about 20% or so. So maybe that video. I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little blur. As you can see, it doesn't really make too much of an effect. Uh, so go ahead, select your uh, wave, hit T, take your opacity down to, let's try 20, that's way too low, let's try 40. That might be too high, and you'll see, because you want to make it subtle, it's about the same as the dirt charge, so that might not be too bad, let's try that for now. Yeah, I like it. So hit tilde key to maximize that. that tilt the key is next to the 1 on the left side of your keyboard. Yeah, it's not too bad. Page up, page up, page up. Let it load. That's essentially what you're going to end up with. Alright, we're almost done. This is almost everything you need to do. Uh, to recap, what we basically did was we used some rotoscoping, used a mask to cut out a freeze frame, and animated that out, and then put a dirt charge and a ground crack behind it. Wait a few seconds, uh, depends on how long you're willing to wait. Uh, remember, that's not actually there. If you let go, it goes away. Ta-da! Um, then, ground landing. Indeed, uh, it still looks terrible. <laughs> to be honest, uh, because we haven't added the necessary final effects. Oh yeah, don't forget we used a difference mat for this, which I think is cool. Oh, and the reason behind having the landing be behind is so that in some videos, uh, or in some parts, I should say, where it's unnecessary to, like, there's nothing behind it. Uh, sometimes your mat isn't amazing. If you take it off, like, you won't have a shadow. You won't have, sometimes, part of an arm, for instance. Uh, so having the one in the background makes it to where it fills in any gaps, for instance. <sighs> yeah, so... Indeed. Yeah. Next part is the finishing touch. Let's go ahead and select everything. And pre-compose it. Go to layer, down to pre-compose, and call it final footage. Or, I don't know, love bears, I don't care. Uh, Alright. This is where we can add things like camera shake, uh, color correction, your aspect ratio boxes, all the final finishing touches. Oh, and the, the sound. You might have wondered why I, uh, for the clean plate, used several different clean videos instead of just, say, one single frozen frame. Well, with this, you get to retain the background sound uh, at your scene, like, yeah, nothing's being recorded for sound-wise, but, like, random sounds, like the sound of nothing, for instance. It does make a difference if it's just a freeze frame and you have no sound, because that will be very obvious and very ugly. So go back to your uh, source footage. Oh, your, or your final footage, I should say. And now we can start dealing with sound. Before anything, let's deal with sound. Uh, here, just kind of take off right there. Let's drag a... I actually use the explosion sounds that he provided for your explosions. I mean, it's 
kind of like a sonic boom. Might as well use it, right? Uh, control shift to snap two, and there you go. Hit LL to bring up the waveform, and you, as you can see, if we zoom in, where we have it, where we want this to be aligned with, isn't exactly there. So let's uh, drag that over to where we want it. So this explosion will go off, and we could play around with whatever we want. Go to audio. I like to bump down the bass since it's in the distance, and you know whatever. And also, don't want it as loud. You don't want it to be your primary sound. So, I don't know, negative eight perhaps. Yeah, it's in the distance, and you can add like reverb and whatnot. But that's not the point. So let's go to right where we land. That's the next point in time. Going. Oh, that's why. Just finding the exact moment of landing. Probably a second ahead. There we go. Down, down downtown there we go bam that's where uh, the sounds gonna originate is this frame right here so let's go back to our footage and I like using the far one for this one snap to place don't forget and the dull one at the same time so for both of these let's get an L or just a single L but um, you want the waveform So let's click out. We want to align it. Kid, shorten it if you want to take a little bit of the boom out. Um, both of these could go ahead and lower the sound by, I don't know, four or so. Make it like three or four. And I like adding in a punching sound. Just enough that it's like. powerful yeah something like that uh... Make this where we can have more room to preview alright so we have our three sounds compiling the landing of the explosion what if we you might have noticed in the video how I had uh... like kind of a swooshing sound a flyby kind of sound what I did for that actually is uh... let's take the dull out here, hit LL. Take away the majority of all that. You just want a little the ending, like you want the echo essentially of the explosion, and you're gonna reverse it. So go to time and uh, time reverse layer, and that will give you your bit of a lead up to the moment of explosion. All right. So now what we can do is uh if you hold down control and alt add that a couple times. First one I'm going to call ratio because I'm going to change I'm going to add some black bars in a moment. This one I'm going to call color correction. Uh and so to proceed I'm going to advertise advertise a couple more video copilot products uh not really products actually they're completely free and there's no reason why you don't ha you uh don't have them if you don't um what i'm going to use is aftershake that's one of andrew kramer's presets that basically adds some uh you know camera motion makes it a little bit more realistic to not being on a tripod and that i will apply shake footage to the actual footage itself and he covers an entire tutorial as you saw here uh, granted it's three minute three and a half minutes long so it's not too ex like expensive for your time uh, and you just animate to where you have regular motion and then right here you keyframe uh, make everything a lot larger all of a sudden and then down to not much again so it's just like 
you hitting the ground really shook that tripod or that person who was holding the camera. Um, allegedly. <laughs> Same thing is over here whenever you take off. The ratio thing, I it's it's you know completely optional. I like it. For instance, uh, you just take the aspect ratio letterbox thing. Uh, if you don't have it, just go to download project and it'll give you all their presets. For instance, uh, English Copilot, all of them, like literally. Uh, so you just install those. And so for that, I'm gonna go I'm just gonna type in ratio over here on the side. <laughs> I feel like I'm on CSI Miami or something saying that. Uh and I drag in the two point four aspect ratio, that's anamorphic widescreen, I believe. Um but sometimes I think that's too much. So I, I click over here on two point four and I I don't know, put it down to two point one. Uh sometimes two point two depending. I believe in my video I have it at 2.2 actually. Yeah, that. It's completely up to you. Uh, I personally think it makes it look a little bit more professional. And yeah. You can actually hit P and adjust the that upwards a little. Yeah. The reason why I say use the aftershake for the motion stuff is because it takes care of almost everything for you. I mean, if you want to, you could go ahead and have the speed and the amount all set to sliders and animate the sliders, but then you have to deal with expressions, and it's just so much easier to use a free preset to find on the internet. Uh, and it takes care of the motion tile right away, um, which is nice. And then for color correction, uh, you know, you can do whatever. Uh, Add some curves if you want to actually like increase the contrast or whatever. Again, up to you. Uh, I wouldn't do this. I used actually a different thing. <laughs> to be honest, I used a uh, Film Magic Pro, which is also video copilot, kind of like a walking advertisement, I guess. Uh, but you know, you could use your hue saturation things. Drop the saturation down a little bit. Perhaps go back up to your thing here. Like adding a little bit of a uh, green not that much green that's a lot of green just a little to the shadow yeah let's make it look terrible <laughs> but you get the point this is basically what you end up with um, so yeah my name is Ren Weichman and I'm signing off have fun